Well, good morning, y'all. Welcome to our first Safe to Eat Workgroup meeting or STU meeting of 2023. My name is Anna Holder, uh, pronouns she, her, and I am a co-chair of this work group along with Jay Davis, who will take it away in a moment. Just a heads up, as per usual, we're recording this meeting for posting on the website in the next couple of days. Um, and I, I think I saw someone on the phone. So um, we'll have ways for you to engage in the Zoom logistics slide um, that's next. Do you wanna take us there, Jay? Awesome. So, I mean, we've been in Zoom mode for many years now, so <laughs> folks are probably used to this, but um, can you go back to the previous slide, Jay? Oh, Please. sorry. No worries. You're pumped about the material. You wanna get there already. I'm, I'm, um, I'm letting so people if, if you okay. have an interesting, you know, Zoom identifier that's kind of goggle, gobbledygook, <laughs> we highly recommend you rename yourself so we can um, know who's in the room with us. And there's instructions on how to do that on the slide. There's also your Zoom controls on the bottom panel. Um, we love seeing faces. So if you're able and comfortable, we recommend um, turning on your camera. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand or add something to the chat and um, you can mute, unmute yourself when um, it's time for you to contribute. And um, we love emojis, so feel free to use that to give us a thumbs up or a smiley face or whatever um, feels great for you in that moment. Um, and then we'll also use the chat um, for feedback if you'd like, um, that's always an option. So um, next slide, please. As I mentioned, if you're on the phone, um, phone commands to mute and unmute yourself is star six for mute and unmute and star nine to raise your hand. And then we're recording the meeting. And if you'd like transcripts, the, um, you can go to your more options and enable the transcripts or like turn them on or off if they're showing and you don't like them. So next slide, please. Awesome. <clears throat> As we start every meeting, and especially as we start all the amazing things that we're doing this year, we like to open with an acknowledgement of tribal lands in California. The Cali PA building and the hub of this work group and where I physically am right now in this moment is located in a place that we now call Sacramento, California, which was and still is a gathering place for many local tribes who have lived um, throughout the Central Valley and foothills for generations and are the original stewards of these lands. These people include the Nishanan, Maidu, and Miwok peoples and the Putuin and Wintu nations who've remained committed to the stewardship of this land, these lands and waters over many center, centuries. And it's important for us to recognize that our organization um, sits on tribal lands of indigenous peoples and that we are all here because of the sacrifices that have been forced upon them. And in acknowledging and remembering these peoples in everything that we do, we hope to honor th their legacies, their lives and their descendants. And if you're interested in learning more about which tribal lands you're on, I highly recommend the nativeland.ca site. It's a pretty awesome resource. Um, so with that, I will pass it to our amazing co-chair, Jay Davis. Thanks, Anna. Good morning, everybody. Um, just want to say right off that uh, there's some disappointing news this morning that Colin Eaglesmith had the, this meeting on his calendar for tomorrow. So you will not be presenting. He's traveling right now. So unfortunate. Um, but we'll reschedule, uh, hopefully for the next meeting. Um, and then we're, for the agenda, we'll just basically move everything else up and it'll be a shorter meeting. Uh, really too bad that was gonna be one of our more substantive topics today. Um, but if anybody needs to adjust their uh, participation based on that, then you, know, you can do that. 
Um, okay, so let's start with the introductions and starting with the peer review panel. I see at least one peer review member. Harry Ollendorf. Good morning, Harry. Um, are Chris or Bruce on, Anna? Not hearing anything. I don't from see them with a quick skip. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, EPA. Anybody from EPA? Okay. Anybody from OEHA? I'm here, Jay West. Also, Charan from OEHA. Great. Moss Landing. Autumn Anima. Gary at Chikawa. Scott Lucas. I did see Billy's name too, Billy Jacob. I like to <laughs> right in the background, that Billy. I see Billy. <laughs> okay, is that everybody from Moss Landing? Maybe you are on mute, Billy. Yeah. All right, region one. Region two. Christine Yoshida. Sammy Harper is also here, more than two. Thank you, region three. Melissa Doherty. Region four. Region five. Lauren Snetherman. And Angela Laban. Oh. <laughs> okay, I heard, heard two of you. Region six. Hi, Kelly Huck here. Elena Misico as well. Great, region seven. Region eight. And Region 9. Chad Laughlin. All right. Was there anybody who was trying to unmute that uh, that we missed? Okay. State Board. Allie Dunn. And Allie. Jennifer Peace. Salisbury. Amanda Blackwell. Sydney Rillum. Kevin Burke. Is that everybody? Okay, and then Monitoring Council. Is Nick with us this morning? All right, um, and then uh, if you're not in one of these categories that we've covered, um, please add your name in the chat box. Are, are we seeing any names in there, Anna? Yeah, welcome, oh. Sarah. <laughs> All right, have we missed anybody? My dogs are. <laughs> dogs say hello. Welcome, doggos. <laughs> All right. We'll move on. Um, okay. So, again, the, uh, the, we have a hole in our agenda because of the snafu with Colin. Um, so, we'll just move everything up. I'll give a review of the final monitoring plan for this year. Then we'll do our round of quick updates. Um, and I have a, another meeting I need to jump to at 10 o'clock. So um, I'll be able to be, be here for the quick updates. Um, on the, looking on the bright side. Um, and then um, we plan to break for 10 o'clock. Uh, maybe we, we can see how, how we're doing. Maybe we don't need the break. 
Um, but then Anna's going to um, give an update on the realignment and tribal engagement. And then Anna will lead a discussion on the long term monitoring priorities assessment in 2024. And then we'll wrap up. So, any questions about the agenda? Anybody have any constraints? All right. So here's the summary of the item that we'll hear about, hopefully at the next meeting. <laughs> um, very much looking forward to it. Disappointed about today. Um, OK, so um, kind of the final recap of the monitoring plan for, for this year. Uh, we were discussing it. Um, over the past couple of years, the, the final plan has been posted to the to the website. Um, so we're we're ready to go in in terms of uh, having that that document prepared. So it's just going to be a quick update, kind of mostly a refresher and uh, update on the latest details on the plan. So 2023 is Panel five of the long-term Bass Lake study, the, the fifth and final panel. Um, our priorities with this panel um, are to remain consistent with what we've been doing for the first panels, one through four. And um, that, you know, that means not only sampling the panels, but um, also uh, through these through these years, we've been including um, what we call OEHA add-ons, where we ask OEHA what data gaps they have for the water bodies we're sampling, and they give us that information, and we try to fill those gaps. And we're we're continuing to do that with Panel Five. Um, and then we we've also, where possible, tried to fit in other high priority lakes. Um, and this year, the the budget kind of in the multi-year perspective is pretty tight. We're trying to conserve our budget for the for next year with the final round of coast monitoring. So um, we did you know get some um, requests for additional water bodies and they're listed in the plan, but it's likely that we're not going to be able to sample them. There is one that um, we are planning to add and that's Lake Hodges. Um, but the the reason that that is kind of making it in is that Chad has uh, uh, offered to coordinate the fish collection for that, which is the, the most expensive part of the monitoring. So um, with that, we're including Lake Hodges. Um, and then these slides will be posted. The link to the final monitoring plan is in the slides, and it's also easy to find on the on the bioaccumulation program website. Okay, so just a refresher and some minor updates. So, refresher what the plan looks like, and it's uh, it's an abbreviated document um, that um, just includes what's been changed from the original monitoring plan that we published for for panel one um, for in 2015. So it's got the updated tables and the updated background information. Um, the the key thing um, in addition to some minor updates to the tables on fish lengths and and you know parameter lists and things is the, the list of lakes that we're gonna sample. And there have been updates. The, the, the details are all included in the monitoring plan. Um, and you know, we, we start out with the list that for, the, for the full list for panel five that we came up with at the beginning of the study in 2015. Um, but some lakes have been sampled uh, recently, and then some lakes are not sampleable. So there, there are some deletions from from the original list for panel five. Um, one example is Anderson Lake. Um, that there's 
work being done on the dam there. And so, um, you know, there's, there's doesn't not possible or it doesn't make sense to sample when there's not really water in the lake. Um, another example, Lafayette Reservoir was deleted. We sampled it in 2021 based, uh, from, based on our request from Region 2. Um, another deletion was Harbor Lake which also known as Machado Lake and um, fishing's not currently allowed there due to restoration. So there have been some deletions. Uh, we capture all the details in, in this document. And we also you know, note whether we're analyzing PCBs, whether we're analyzing pesticides. We do PCBs on around 20% of the water bodies and pesticides um, about 5% pretty rarely. Uh, but Oso Flaco Lake was is one of the lakes that we've sampled previously that had high organochlorines, so we'll, we'll sample that again. Um, one of the recent, one of the last changes was Robinson Pond was deleted um, based on input from Lauren Smitherman. It's not not really good fish habitat. Um, and then another, one of the other final changes was the information on Lake Hodges. Kuyamaka Lake, um, Lake Kuyamaka was deleted. We sampled it last year for the realignment. So we've, we've deleted a few, but we still have a good number of lakes on the list and we'll get a good, um, you know, good kind of sampling of overall sampling, good, good sample size of lakes across California for panel five. Um, so the overall timeline, we submitted the permit in September, discussed the plan at, at our STU meeting in November, got the final comments in November and finalized the plan. Um, we're working on um, updating the QAPP and getting that posted. We'll have a kickoff meeting with the team in February or March and then we're starting monitoring a little on the early side, at the beginning of April, uh, on a request from Moss Landing. Um, and this is to um, work with the um, new requirements re uh, regarding temperature restrictions for electrofishing. Uh, when temperatures get high, um, the uh, it, the resource agencies don't like, you know, don't don't allow electrofishing. And this is uh, a new development in the last couple of years. Um, and it it does impact um, our ability to sample as the temperatures get warmer. So we're starting a little bit early. Um, this is, we've started this early before, so it's not really a, a major change uh, to, you know, based on past precedent. Um, uh, Westheim actually was wondering if we could start in March, but I thought that was a little pushing it a little too early and would would not be consistent with what we've done in the past. So we compromised on starting at the beginning of April. Um, and then um, this is going to be an interesting year. We've with the hydrology that we've had in the last few years, um, it's kind of a great natural experiment that's going on. And I just want to remind people of what data we've gotten so far. This, these are the statewide average concentrations for the for black bass from panels one through three. And um, 2015 was a very dry year. Uh, we were in the middle of a five-year drought or nearing the, well, yeah, basically in the middle of a five-year drought. Um, the drought ended in 2017, um, and that was a pretty wet year. And then 2019 was actually a pretty wet year also. So the hypothesis that is sort of um, building here is that the, the, that the, um, mercury concentrations are elevated in the wet years. Um, 
And the next couple of um, data sets are going to be very interesting. Um, this graph shows drought area in California, and you know the the more brown, red, and orange and yellow is you know indicating increasing degree of drought across the state. So 2015 is in this area here. Uh, we were again in the middle of the a big drought. <clears throat> 2017 was this uh, wet was a wet year and. The drought area went way down. Severity and area went way down. 2019, the it was even uh, even less drought um, area and severity. Um, but then 2021, uh, we the drought got severe again. Um, and as we we've, we've all been living the last couple weeks, <laughs> 2023 is uh, quite a wet year. So we've had this great kind of, you know, variation from in, in terms of understanding impact of hydrology on mercury. It's not great in other ways, <laughs> either drought or floods, but um, we've had this extreme variation in hydrology, which uh, will be very interesting to see how that plays out with our data. Um, We'll talk about the 2021 data. We'll be working that data up. And um, if we get the organics data, we'll be presenting that uh, data set at the next meeting. Well, could probably present the mercury regardless since we have those data. Um, and it'll be very interesting to see, see what they're doing. So hypothesis would be that, um, you know, based on what we've seen so far, that 2021 would, could have lower values uh with drought conditions and then 23 um hypothesis prediction is that they would go up again if that hypothesis is correct so it'll be very interesting to get all these data okay so that's the summary of the current plan and wetting your appetite for seeing the data any questions I'll just note that for um, regional swamp coordinators, I did send an email out um, earlier this week to schedule the kickoff meeting. So be sure to check your emails and um, let me know your availability so we can get all the logistics settled um, in uh, as soon as we can. Any questions or comments? All right. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to the next item. Yeah, why don't I take over sharing? Okay. <clears throat> I love playing the next slide game with you, Jay, but. <laughs> Awesome. So we're just going to run through the quick updates that we usually do. Um, we are happy to, to note that the 2019, um, oops, the 2019 Bass Lakes data and report is complete and on the website. So there's also a link in um, the agenda and on these slides, anything that's like blue text and underlined is a link. So if you are looking for something in the slide deck, that's what that means. Um, the 2020 Coast data and, um, and report, this is kind of a standing item. Nothing has really changed. Um, the three PCB samples that um, were sent to SGS Access in March have been processed, and so we're working on um, getting that data into our systems. And as usual, um, as, as we've noted before, we're going to wrap the report for the 2020 COAST um, with the remaining COAST data that will be collected next year. So that report will come out in 2025. 
The, as Jay mentioned, the 2021 panel four data um, is, we've got all the medals ready to go. And so Jay and team are starting to work those up for our reporting. We're still waiting on the organics, but um, the cruise report is posted and ready to check out if that's something you're interested in. So for 2022 data, the large majority of um, metals data have been processed and um, and brought into our system, our data systems. We're still um, for the realignment. We believe Chad and um, feel free to jump in here. Region nine is still planning to collect lobster samples that hasn't been done yet, but it's it's a coming. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add to that, Chad? Uh, for realignment. Basically everything has been sampled but lobster. Um, and so the lobster sampling is probably gonna start next week. So Exciting. Weather, if the weather will cooperate, we'll see. Yeah, Lauren? Excuse me, uh, what analyses are you doing on the lobster? Uh, lobsters are getting mercury, selenium, arsenic, and then OC pesticides, PCBs, PFOS, and I believe maybe PBDs. I can't remember off the top. The works. The works. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Chad. Harry, I saw you unmuted. Did you have a question? Yeah, I was wondering: is that just the tail of the lobster that's analyzed, or how do you do that? So for this sampling, traditionally we've uh, when we've done lobster sampling, we've targeted the tail. Um, for this, it's a tribal and subsistence angling effort. So we are actually doing whole without the shell. Um, as much fun as Autumn would have processing the shell as a whole organism, it's a little bit of a challenge. So we're, we're basically doing the internal organs and the tail meat together, like someone's making lobster stew, basically. And uh, so you're not doing any of the tails separately, so you have continuity with previous? So, no, not at this point, because the, the tribal and subsistence angling groups wanted them run whole. Um, the prior work on lobsters is really limited. Um, as far as I know, the only lobster work was the, has been the stuff we've done in San Diego Bay specifically, which looked at tails. And then EPA ran, I think, maybe three or four lobsters um, off of uh, Palos Verdes associated with the, the uh, DDT work up there. Okay, thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Chad. For the, as you all know, we, we monitored some rivers um, in the um, Central Valley region, and those all the data has been collected except for steelhead at the fish hatchery. Um, and again, metals have been analyzed and um, worked through our, are working through our systems. Um, the, the Central Coast region also did some monitoring. I don't know, Autumn, if you have an update you wanted to add on that. Sure, this is the third year of uh... Beaches and Pier study that they did, kind of bog style, which is why um, bog is in the name. And um, all of those data have been submitted from a metal standpoint. Um, you can see at the bottom of the slide, it says all organic samples are, haven't been shipped yet. Um, we were gonna ship them last week and then we were gonna ship them this week. And uh, we've actually been locked out of our offices because of the storms down here. So that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Yeah, Gary. Uh, yes, um, for the steelhead from the McQualamy Fish Hatchery, um, I've been trying to get a hold of them since the beginning of the year, and um, there's been no answer, no response to my emails. So I'm not sure if they had to evacuate. That's right below Comanche Reservoir. Uh, but uh, I'll still try and, and contact them, but. Right now, I have had no response from them for the last several weeks. Okay, thanks for that update, Gary. Lauren? Yeah, Gary, um, of course, since it's in my region, I'll see if 
I can, you know, figure out who a, who a contact is and see um, if I can get a hold of someone for well, you. No, I have the contact information from the hatchery manager. Okay. I, and that that's how we got the um the last one the salmon uh in november i believe uh and so okay. he knows that we were going to plan on uh getting the steelhead in january it's just that there's just no response uh when i reach out to them but i do have their their contact information okay well thanks for trying sure it's been a bunkers couple of weeks for a lot of folks. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll try again. Thanks so much, Gary. And that brings us to um, OEHA's fish consumption advisories. So um, I keep track of the updates that they send out. And there was an advisory for fish that migrate back in November that impacted a whole bunch of other advisories and links to each of those is here. I haven't seen any other advisories. So I don't know if um, Wes, if you have any other updates on stuff that's been sent out or if you wanna give us a teaser for what we should be expecting this year, that'd be great. Sure, I can do a teaser. Uh, there's a few coming forward. One large one being San Francisco Bay, an update there. Uh, Pyramid Lake and Castaic Lake and Lagoon will also be coming out shortly. Awesome. Sweet. I was hoping you would <laughs> give us a teaser. <laughs> um, is there anything else um, to, for that you want to share with the group OEHA advisory-wise or we're good? Uh, I'll be having a poster at the fish forum related to oil spills. It's not the fish ad consumption advisories per se, but. Awesome. Looking That's great. To that. Yeah, and we have information on the Fish Forum, I think, in the next couple of slides. So if you're cool. going, check out Wes's poster. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, Wes. And, uh, just remembering another um, item that we've talked about with OEHA that we've had in the past is uh, where OEHA sort of gives us their plan for the next year or so and, uh, you know, solicits any input from, from the regions and the state board on priorities. Um, is that something that we could, you think we could do again, Wes, maybe, at, you know, in, the, in one of the next meetings? Yeah, I think we could do that. It just, once we uh, get it on the books, we can try to get it planned out. And I can talk to Susan just to confirm. Okay. Yeah, I'll, adding an action item for myself, I'll circle back with you after the meeting, Wes, and we can coordinate. Okay. Perfect. Great. Yeah, I mean, no, no pressure, but if if you guys can fit that in, that that was a, a good thing for for the group. Yeah, I think that would be good too. Awesome. Harry, I was just wondering on the upcoming advisory for San Francisco Bay. Is there a particular focus of? Uh, is it mercury or which analytes are likely to be limiting consumption? Uh, I know PCBs will be an issue in some of the bait fish species that will be released. And Tran, do you have any other details? I didn't write the report. Um, it's mostly mercury and PCBs. And um, yeah, we found high PCBs in the bait fish like uh, anchovies and top smelt and whatnot. So those will be the, the new additions to the advisory. So based Thanks. on based on my discussions with uh, Weha, it's, it's I think it's mainly a matter of adding species to the advisory and not like you know the contaminants are still mercury and PCBs as as always. Awesome. Thanks, team. That was a great update. Um I I'm not I don't see anyone from the TMDL group. Um, on the line. And if you're here, you're welcome to join in. Um, so over the past couple of meetings, the the updates that we've been given is they're working things out. They'll let us know when they have something exciting to share. Um, and I'm working on building relationships with the TMDL program um, so we can have a more regular uh, presence from those folks 
um, on, on this call. But if there's anyone else that has any other updates on TMDL goodness, <laughs> feel free to jump on it. Yeah, Lauren. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to give a quick update on the Delta methylmercury TMDL. Uh, we are still plugging along on the reevaluation, um, reconsideration, review, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we are hoping to go to scientific peer review uh, probably in the spring with, um, with a draft staff report. And at that time, we will release it publicly as well uh, for uh, initial public review, not the formal public review, but um, for comments and questions and um, and all that. So that's kind of the big thing that my group is working on. Oh, and uh, Lauren Smitherman, Central Valley Water Board, if everyone doesn't know yet. <laughs> I, I do a lot of talking at this meeting. Um, and uh, let's see, we are also working on a Central Valley Mercury strategy that will incorporate some of the fish data that was collected during this past sampling um, on the rivers. So that's what we have going on in Central Valley. Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't received any major updates on the Monitoring Council. Um, but their next meeting is February 23rd. I believe it's going to be a hybrid in-person virtual uh, opportunity, but the information is on the website on um, where it'll be. And an agenda usually comes out like a week before the meeting. Um, so stay tuned for that. I also know that the, um, the equity work group of the monitoring council is planning on meeting um quarterly as well uh i will add that to our quick updates um when i remember when the meetings are <laughs> but i'll add that to the notes also uh, anna another detail on the monitoring council is that this meeting is focused on pfas um i'm not sure what bioaccumulation data might be part of the agenda, but, um, you know, it's one of one of the contaminants, the bioaccumulative contaminants of, of high interest these days. Nice. Thanks for that ad, Jay. That's awesome. Yeah, um, Jay. Oh, real quick, Anna. Um, this is Allie. On that note, you read my mind. So we were going to have the SPOT program, just talk a little bit about what we've done so far there. And I do think like Chad, you had mentioned at region nine doing some PFAS analysis for lobster, even if it's like, and I'm happy to do this as part of spot swamp things as a side note, but just to make that entire council group aware of what we have planned or where we're headed, even if we don't have data analyzed yet, I think it still would be nice just to share uh, what we're up to. So, I'm happy to follow up with Chad, but if there's others that also have things going on, let's talk and we can update the council during that meeting. So Ali, the answer for me is real quick, is yeah. all of, we have funding now for all of the realignment samples to be run for PFOS. So that's the plan. Okay, perfect. I'll share that with the group. <laughs> and I don't know from statewide perspective too, Anna, we can talk more, but, um, I don't know. I just think it would be good so they know that the awesomeness that Swamp is up to for all of our programs as it relates to PFAS. Yeah. Thanks. Oh. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Ellie. Yeah. And Ellie, there, uh, we have a ton of PFAS data for the Bay. Um, that uh, Miguel Mendez is, um, I know he's uh, been invited to speak on weight, PFAS and wastewater, a uh, recent project, but. Um, you know, if you would like, uh, you know, us to share any of our Bay PFAS data, then, you know, we'd be happy to do that. Okay, yeah. Let me, I'll send an email um, to Nick and keep you guys in the loop and just get a sense of what we could present and see what the council is interested in. We'll go from there. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks, guys. I love it. That's literally what this meeting is for, to make all those connections. So I'm glad we're doing it. Um, other updates. Uh, Wes mentioned he's 
presenting a poster at the National Fish Forum. It, that'll be virtual, um, held 9 to 2.30, uh, 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Pacific on February 28th, March 2nd, March 7th, and March 9th. Um, and so there's a link to the registration. Um, there's also their national fish call is, is coming up as well that EPA hosts, if that's something you're interested in. Um, and with that, does anyone else have bioaccumulation goodness updates that they want to share with the group that we haven't covered quickly? Um, since we uh, you know, aren't that pressed for time, um, I will mention another one that I was thinking about maybe uh, bringing to the group later in the year, but um, SFEI recently in collaboration, partnership with All Positives Possible, a community group in Vallejo, African-American community group. Um, LaDonna Williams is the, the, um, the leader of the organization. We applied for and, and are going to receive funding from EPA, from the San Francisco Bay Water Quality Improvement Fund, to um, for, for a project, a big part of which is fish monitoring in the Vallejo area. Um, and it's uh, interesting, it's, it's um, and it's going to talk about realignment. There's, you know, it's got good synergy with the realignment that's going to be in region two. Um, there are two components to the fish monitoring. We're, we're going to um, uh, do our sort of usual RMP style, which is similar to uh, swamp style monitoring with um, you know, we, a contractor going in and collecting targeted species from several locations in the area. Um, you know, we're picking, the community is telling us where they would like to get data and we're gonna go in and get, you know, get, uh, get fish, um, you know, from a, from a boat and, you know, with our usual approach. And we'll be analyzing mercury, PCBs and PFAS. Um, uh, but we're all, there's also a component where we're going to work with community members to collect fish. And we, um, the details, we still need to figure out exactly how we're going to do that and how to make that work with a scientific collecting permit. Um, but we'll be, um, in, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out in, 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 in some, some way, probably. Um, my current thinking is that we'll probably have to have um, like a couple of event days where we uh, get community members out fishing and and uh, get to fish from the community members. But um, the, the community group was very excited about this um, as a way for them to be involved in the process of generating the data and in learning about uh, you know, the science, scientific process. Um, and I think it's, um, it's a kind of a neat pioneering uh, effort to involve citizens in the, in the science. Um, so overall, the, the budget for the monitoring is, is 400,000, which is pretty good. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, that, that'll cover these, these two, this two pronged approach to the monitoring. So um, we'll be doing that work this summer. So it'll um, be, be a busy and interesting year. Awesome. Yeah, we'd love to have um, you and uh, All Positives Possible uh, present on that experience and the results and all that good stuff when those things start coming in. So we'd love yeah. to. Uh, keep learning about this process because yeah, it's, that's like a great way to, you know, include the folks that are most impacted by, uh, by accumulation of pollutants. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that update, Jay. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else have updates that they want to share? Okay, great. So we're just going to keep uh, trekking. So we'll, we'll, we will take a break if we... <laughs> we need to, but um, I think we have time. 
Um, so as many of you know, we, the bioaccumulation monitoring program um, initiated a realignment process um, back in 2020, it was when we um, published the plan. And the main goals of this process are to build stronger relationships and trust with tribes and our community partners, um, build stronger relationships between the state and regional programs, um, and to fill in data and information gaps, particularly as it relates to um, subsistence and tribal consumption. And so um, Chad mentioned the realignment data focus um, being led by the San Diego Advisory Committee. So that's an example of how we're doing that. And, um, you know, the work that Jay's doing with All Positives Possible is also a great example of how we might fill those data gaps. So for those that haven't had the realignment spiel, I'm just going to give a brief, <laughs> a brief uh, recap of what the heck we're talking about um, when, I, when I talk about the realignment. The realignment is a three-year process in a region, a water board region, where the first year we bring together um, an advisory committee comprised of tribal government representatives and representatives from community-based organizations that have an interest in the bioaccumulation space. And we work with them to identify data and for information gaps. So what places, species, and, and pollutants are of real concern for them? And, and um, as one might expect, at least from our experience in the San Diego region, the concerns are greater than our budget. So we also go through a prioritization process. We develop a monitoring plan together that is implemented in the second year. While um, that is, while that monitoring is happening, we continue conversations with the advisory committee about um, communication and engagement and outreach, basically getting to how do folks want to be communicated with? How can we do better about getting the data and information into the hands of the folks that need it most? What does that look like from their perspective? Um, year three, we haven't done it in the San Diego region yet, so this is mostly a, a guess on how we think things are going to go, but we want to continue to have those, you know, communication uh, conversations, but we also want to start, you know, looking at the data that's coming in and getting an understanding of what that means for the communities and the region as a whole, and also look, start, begin to look forward. So think about what partnership can look like outside of this three-year realignment structure, um, and you know, kind of capture any recommendations for improvement of the process, but also for our program moving forward um, from the group while we, while we have them. So we started the first realignment cycle in the San Diego region in 2021. We've met with the advisory committee many times and developed that monitoring plan that we've talked about. We also have developed a long-term recommendations document that kind of captures all of the recommendations that don't really fit in a, a monitoring work plan or a communication and outreach plan. And that has been drafted. I'm working on judging that up before um, we the communication outreach plan before I send it to the advisory committee for their review, and that will be published later this year. Um, and then, like I mentioned, we're going to have conversations about partnership and you know needs moving forward. We've kind of used this process to initiate relationships to begin building trust, but that doesn't all happen in three years. This is a long-term commitment um, by the program. So um, we want to have those conversations. And everything that um, we've produced and generated from the realignment process is available on the website. There's a link at the bottom of the screen, including um, notes from the meeting so folks can get an idea of the types of conversations that we're having and the, you know, the, the things that are coming up in those conversations. In um, 2022, which sounds like it was a long time ago, but it was only like two weeks ago, 
Um, but we, I met with the regional coordinators in January and February, and then again in October, November. And there are a bunch of different <laughs> regional coordinators um, for those that don't know. So not just our regular, um, you know, safety work folks that are probably on this call right now, but um, swamp. Uh, regional coordinators, if they're different from the safety work group coordinators. Uh, we met with the regional tribal coordinators, basin planning, uh, roundtable representatives, um, and then the freshwater harmful algal bloom regional coordinators. And depending on the region, other folks were invited. So we had some executive presence in some of the meetings um, and, and things like that. And we, I really wanted to have these meetings to just check in and see how the regions are doing and what the needs are and um, kind of inform folks about what the realignment process is and their interest and readiness to participate in an upcoming cycle. And so we had those conversations in January and then a lot happens in a year, as we know. So we had them again in October, November, just to kind of touch base. While that was happening, I also um, led statewide tribal engagement for tribes outside of the San Diego region um, to, again, build uh, and foster relationships with our tribal government partners, match names to faces, get an understanding of, you know, which tribes are interested in bioaccumulation monitoring and swamp in general, which tribes have their own environmental departments and have their own monitoring programs, and really think about not just their interest in the realignment process moving forward and, and whether or not they might want to participate in that process, but, you know, how, what partnership can look like outside of that from the monitoring space, since that's, that's our that's our jam around here. And at the end of the year, um, as, as mentioned, the San Diego region realignment is coming to an end. It's sad, but it's true. And so we're going to shift gears um, and start the realignment process in another region. And we kind of went through all of the notes from the, the conversations that I've been having over the past year. And we selected the next region based on really three criteria. The first is if there were tribes that were interested in the realignment process and, and expressed readiness to participate and commit to the three-year process. It's not nothing, three years is a long time, right? Um, we wanted to make sure that our regional board partners had interest and capacity and ability to kind of code lead this process with me. Um, We've had a great experience with Chad and others in the San Diego region, and we really want to make sure that it is a state board, regional board, equal partnership in this process moving forward. And so we wanted to make sure that, you know, the regional board folks are have a lot going on. <laughs> and so we wanted to make sure that um, the realignment process would be a complement to existing um, efforts by the regional board and priorities, and it wouldn't take away from those, those efforts or, you know, workload, things like that. Um, and we wanted to make sure that really the last one is that our values are aligned. So not just um, that the regional board wants to do, you know, take on this work and experiment with what operationalizing equity looks like in that, in our programs, but, you know, making sure that um, they're also interested in doing that work and similar work that in the tribal beneficial uses space, they're working on their own, you know, racial equity resolutions or racial equity action plans, that sort of thing. And, um, Fortunately, a lot of regions, you know, met these criteria, but the region that was, I think, the most ready um, in all of these places was the San Francisco region. So we sent out an update document that kind of announced this, um, I think, in December. And um, so we're really excited to partner with the San Francisco region starting in 2024. That's when the formal realignment process will begin. Um, this year, we're going to prepare for that. So I've already got a meeting scheduled with the San Francisco regional coordinators, and we're going to kind of put our heads together and, and think about, you know, how we want to move forward um, in this space and what preparation looks like from a partnership perspective. I'm also going to do some targeted tribal engagement and outreach um, to San Francisco region tribes to, um, you know, 
find connections and, and see if folks would be interested and able to commit to a three-year process starting in 2024. Um, and then um, we're, we're also going to do the same for community-based organizations, um, just to make sure that we can get our advisory committee assembled and kind of um, hit the ground running in 2024 as, as early as we, we can and start selecting, you know, finding a date when everyone's available and a location where we can meet, hopefully in person. And then we'll initiate that three-year process. So the first year, again, we're going to talk about, we're going to get to know each other. We're going to talk about what data and information gaps there are and how the realignment process and funding that's associated with that can begin to fill those gaps. Um, and, you know, start thinking about communication and outreach and, and all those other good things. Yeah, so that's what's happening with the realignment. Um, I'm also going to continue our statewide tribal engagement. Our tribal engagement plan um, that was written was in early 2022 was really in intended for um, tribal engagement during 2022 to kind of have those conversations with tribes to get an understanding of interest and readiness for the next realignment cycle. But um, these conversations have been tremendously valuable and we're finding, you know, partnerships that we didn't really know ex could exist before. And so I'm going to continue um, meeting with tribes when, when I can and when they're interested um, and, you know, keep that process going to continue to make those connections and build those relationships throughout the state. And then in 2024, again, we'll start the San Francisco realignment um, process, the realignment cycle. We'll, the safety work group, this group of folks here on this call and hopefully many others, will start having conversations about our long-term priorities. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in our next agenda item. And I'm also planning on following up with regional coordinators and, and tribes that I've already met with um, in 2024, 2025, just to touch base, provide updates, um, and continue those conversations in like a light touch <laughs> meeting uh, space. And yeah, so before I move on to our next item, do, do, does anyone have questions about um, where we're headed with the realignment this year? Yeah, Heather. Um, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to give a shout out to you, Anna, because I think Region 8 um, really appreciated all the outreach and all the meetings. And um, so I think that we really felt that this um, kind of uh, th this this outreach and this um, whole process really worked well. And so just wanted to share that. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, I, I hope and I felt that these you know, we've all got so many meetings going on, and I felt like these meetings were actually kind of fun, you know, like, don't share too broadly that it's great to have a meeting with me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was great to have those conversations and learn from each other and build those connections. So um, yeah, thanks for that shout out, Heather. That was very sweet of you. Does anyone else have questions? Great. So we've talked a lot over the past couple of years, kind of giving, um, oh, Jay's got to leave us. Thanks, Jay. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Uh, See you next time. Uh, yeah, so we've talked a lot about, you know, planning for a 2024 long-term monitoring priorities assessment and conversation. And Thus far, it's kind of been very nebulous and hand wavy. And at the last safety worker meeting, I think Jay or, or someone from the regions was like, all right, Anna, but what are you talking, what do you want from us? <laughs> what are we talking about exactly? So um, I uh, put together a general meeting plan. Um, this is totally in the idea phase and we've got time to be flexible, but during this, you know, these conversations and this process, I really want to hear from folks about what your needs are um, from the bioaccumulation space. We've talked a lot about PFAS today. There are other conversations on other analytes and species and things like that that have come up in the realignment space. 
And so we really want to have conversations about, you know, what the future of this program should look like for us. How should we spend our limited budget, right? And so we want to kind of um, talk through that together. So depending on the agenda and, um, you know, the, the content that we want to go over, I'm prepared to have, you know, I like meetings that are short and sweet, but sometimes we need to have, you know, longer conversations. So, you know, up to a half day meeting for each quarterly meeting, depending on the agenda. And for the first couple of meetings, at least, I'd really like to hear from our safety workgroup partners, not just at the regional boards and, and state board programs, but from our agency partners that are also in this space. Um, other um, regional monitoring programs, Jay mentioned the, the San Francisco Bay RMP earlier today and the work that they're doing. I also want to carve out space for our tribal partners. And, um, you know, we're talking with tribes in the realignment process, but that's region specific. And we're talking about, you know, our strategic planning for the next five or more years. So, um, my thought was that we would kind of focus um, a comp like focus a, a group for each meeting. So the first one, quarter one meeting being water boards folks, the quarter two being our agency partners looking at UOEHA, uh, <laughs> public health, and you know hopefully we can get representatives from you know US EPA and the different regional monitoring programs. The third quarter really centering tribal um, monitoring programs and tribal groups also in this space and um, giving them an opportunity to kind of talk about the things that they're interested in and need um, from us as a, as a program moving forward. And then the last meeting really kind of reflecting on everything that we've heard and finding commonalities and making decisions about our priorities moving forward. So that's my rough plan um, for the process. I We also heard at the last safety work group meeting that getting some prompts to sort of get the juices flowing and, and starting to think about, you know, what we want to talk about in during these meetings is really helpful. So I have a document that is really centered on, you know, regional and state board programs and the types of things that we might want to hear from them, including, you know, contact information, updates, um, recent monitoring projects that y'all have completed for the last couple of fiscal years, um, the broader priorities for the region in the last triennial review, um, where you are on the tribal beneficial uses process, it's for those that aren't kind of in tune with that, the tribal beneficial use designation process, all regions are, are going through that process. And um, as per usual, they all have their own flavor and style on how they're doing it. And so that means timelines might be different. Um, we want to know about your vision for your regional monitoring program, bioaccumulation, great, but your vision in general is, is helpful. And any projects that you kind of have in the books, um, and what your wish list and sticking points are. And so I have a document that kind of has this information in template format that I can send out. I will send out to the to the regions after this meeting. Um, and I think my question before I send it out is, what else is needed? <laughs> um, are there other prompts? or resources that folks, not just from the regional boards, but from our agency partners and, and tribal partners on the call that might be helpful to think about as, you know, we prepare. We've got a year before we're going to have these, you know, conversations, but I want the juices to start flowing so we're all kind of like ready to go and excited to talk to each other about this work in 2024. Um, so I'll start with the first question. Yeah, Lauren. Um, I just noticed that, um, you know, today there was a specific TMDL update um, prompt. So you could potentially add that of 
um, specific TMDLs, but really, you know, other um, control programs or, um, yeah, uh, policies being developed that that might affect this. But I I definitely like the the prompts. Uh, I I just tend to you know ramble off what's on the top of my head. So having um, a little bit of time to prepare to coordinate, say with our swamp coordinator or with, um, well, I guess I'm the I'm the tribal beneficial uses person too, but with other people that that are working on a uh, tribal beneficial use work, I think that that'll um, help make a, a broader update. Awesome. Yeah, that's super helpful. And you know, I have it in a document format so that folks can like look at it together. But if you know, a survey would be a better format to capture feedback um, before, during, or or after our conversations. That's also something that I'm open to as well. But I, I hate surveys. <laughs> like yeah. I don't want to force them on people unless they're really needed. Yeah, on the TMDL roundtable, we recently started a document where each region goes in before the meeting to provide their update. And we are still allowing time during the meeting for the regions to um, speak their update, but that might be um, a good option or opportunity if someone can't make this call. So at least we can get those updates um, because there's so many programs, at least at region five, I don't know everything that goes on and other programs that might be relevant for, for this group. So that's a suggestion, but I don't necessarily want to rely on like, oh, it's another spreadsheet we have to fill out. So yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> I was also thinking to that, you know, providing this template now, um, and then like using that as your presentation tool. So you just kind of walk through that document. We would, you know, to be clear, post it, share it publicly, that sort of thing. Um, and then, yeah, kind of use that as our, our talking point. Um, anyone else from the regions have feedbacks or, or thoughts on, um, on the prompts? Or the idea of presenting <laughs> your work. I'm not trying to like put you on the spot. Well, I'm not. I'm giving you a year before the spotlight's on you. So <laughs> awesome. Um I know I've talked to Jay about like the getting more information about the Bay RMP and, and things like that. So I'm really trying to work this year to build closer relationships with those monitoring programs and we'll invite them to present on their work as well. Um, but our other agency partners, OEHA, how would you feel about having time to really like think about and present on your longer term priorities? Is that something that well, how do you feel about that? <laughs> no, I think that might be useful because there are certain sticking points and things that would help us that, you know, being in our offices, we're not out in the field and there's certain inf data gaps we have and yeah. even qualitative information on certain topics like con consumption practices. Right. I mean, it's well, a lot of things we've talked about, but it'd be nice to have, you know, as part of data as we can get or at least information. Right. Would having like a prompt document or a, some sort of template be helpful for you um, as you kind of prepare to have these conversations? Yeah, I think that might be helpful in that it, we could deliver it in a way that's consistent with some of the other presentations and uh, based on what your needs are. Yeah, okay. Or what, what you're interested in. Great. I'll, I'll work on creating like a non-waterboard <laughs> prompt template, not just for OEHA, but for other, you know, I've been talking with um, Department of Public Health recently and kind of want to pull them into the conversation and also our tribal government partners, something that they might be able to use too to prepare. Yeah, that'd be great. Awesome. Any other agency or tribal folks want to chime in? Tran, I see you unmuted yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, Anna. So I was wondering for the realignment plan, you had mentioned that you guys identify data gaps and needs in discussion with tribal and community partners. 
Um, I was wondering if there is a place online or or on a shared document somewhere where we could uh, look and see what those needs and gaps are exactly. Yeah, so the best place would be the monitoring work plan. Um, and there's a link to that on these slides. Let me go back. So the third or the second bullet on this slide is a link to the monitoring and analysis work plan that has all the details and the priorities and things like that of what we talked about. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And with that discuss, um, say for the lobster data, for example, um, uh, it was mentioned that the tribes requested them analyzed as a whole organism because that's just, uh, how it's consumed normally. Is that kind of information in that document as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thanks, great. Awesome, easy question. Thanks, Jen. Um, and then I guess the, the question I have for everyone on the call um, is, do these topics and timelines, like do they make sense to you? Is there something that you think we should kind of make space for in these conversations that I haven't thought about yet? Yeah, Heather. Um, I don't I don't know if what was on the last slide, I can't remember, but I think um, the bite, coordination with the bite and the number of samples and that type of thing, um, if that's possible. Yeah. Yeah, getting the bite uh, folks to present is on my list for sure. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, Chad. So I know this is the stew, um, but what about uh, bioaccumulative effects on uh, fish and wildlife? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something yeah. we used to do in the bog back in the day. Um, and I, I would hate to see that kind of lost in the in the the focus solely on safe to eat. Yeah, it's but I don't, still I don't know in that... our part of our mission um, is to work on those things. I think the reason why it hasn't been a focus is purely resource limitations. But yeah, I love I love making space for that um, that conversation, um, and I'm glad this meeting's recorded because now I'll remember it. <laughs> no. So, and then the other suggestion I had is, would be, it would be good to include a partner from um, CDFW on the MLPA side. So their, their decadal review just came out um, and they talk a lot about the importance of pollutants impacting um, both populations and like fisheries, um, but there isn't really much beyond that. So I think it would be good to bring in somebody to provide their perspective and their needs. Yeah, that'd be great. If you have a specific contact in mind, can you shoot that over to me? Otherwise, I'll just start hanging people. My contacts are local, so I don't okay. know who the appropriate person is on the statewide basis. Okay. Uh, I got some fish wildlife folks, so I'll reach out to them. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Anything else? Nope. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, Jennifer. Okay. So you can tell me if this is like not the right time. So, uh, <laughs> but for some reason, this conversation is making me think about it. So recently, Swamp IQ has been able to convert our um, shell data loaders, which pretty much put in the data that's the base layer mm -hmm. um, from 32-bit, which was a real pain for a lot of folks into 64-bit so people can use it on their computers. And kind of this conversation is making me think about um, the data that we're not capturing because people don't put it into our database or it's very difficult to get into our database. We now have an option to do it. And um, I, I, I'm really, I'm looking at Squirt. Okay. <laughs> But there's like, you know, there is, um, we're able to hopefully get some more data into the database. Uh, yeah. It doesn't work for field, but it definitely works for fish tissue. Yeah, I wonder, I, I feel like we can have that conversation sooner. I don't, Okay. 
I don't know that it necessarily impacts like our long term priorities. No. Yeah. I just wanted to throw it out there because for some reason the conversation was making me. Yeah. And I didn't no. want it to get lost. Absolutely. I, I think we should maybe try. Let, let me circle back with you. Let me, let's okay. maybe try and have an item on that this year okay. um, from the safety work group because then we can I, get. It, yeah, this just, this sooner. conversation <laughs> just made me think about it, and I'm like, if I don't say this, it's totally going to go bye bye. Yeah. Okay. No, thanks. thanks for bringing that up. Awesome. Great. Does anyone else have thoughts on, um, you know, as we prepare to have this conversation next year to really think about our long term priorities as a program and as a work group, how we're going to you know, prioritize spending our funds because, um, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure that we're not, <laughs> not going to receive as much as we'd like in terms of our ability to do all the things that we wish we could do. Um, so if there's anything else that comes to mind in terms of a resource that might be helpful to you as you work with your teams to like prepare for this conversation or topics that you think we should talk about before 2024, like Jennifer just brought up. I'd love to, to hear that feedback here or offline, whatever's more comfortable. Okay. That's, that's all I had for y'all today. Um, and I think instead of taking a break, why don't we just wrap um, and you can have some more time in your day. Does that sound okay for folks? I see head nods. I see thumbs up. Awesome. Great. So um, upcoming safety at work group meetings. Um, this one was a little bit earlier to accommodate scheduling that ended up not working out anyway, but our usual meetings start around 9.30 and go to 12.30, depending on the agenda. Much like this one, we like to keep them short and sweet and only meet about things that we absolutely need to talk about together. Um, they're scheduled for the third Wednesday of the month. If you are on the safety work group email list, then you should have calendar holds already um, it, on, on your calendars. If you don't have it, or you, you would like me to forward you the invitation, um, you shoot me an email or make sure you're on the email list. And then when we send updates to the um, preparing for the upcoming meetings, those will pop up as well. The next meeting is on April 19th. We've talked about the council meeting on February 23rd um, and uh, that's centered on, on PFAS. And so we've got some action items um, to follow up on that. Some topics, the last, during the last safety work group meeting, we kind of did a great brainstorm on topics that we want to um, hear about at future meetings. And so we're going to try and work those into the agenda, but I'd love to hear more if there are other ideas that are coming up. So we'll have our usual, you know, quick updates. Hopefully Jay can present on the draft 2021 uh, Bass Lakes data. Um, I'm also working on a pretty significant overhaul of our bioaccumulation monitoring program and safety work group web pages as actually a result of the San Diego realignment conversations and really trying to make our web pages and resources easier to find and answer, you know, frequently asked questions in a way that's non-technical, um, really showing folks what resources exist and how to access them and things like that. So I am doing my darndest to get those kind of up um, in, over the next couple of months. And so my hope is that I'll be able to kind of do a demonstration on the new web page structure in April. Um, if that doesn't work, I might also just kind of like record myself and put that out there so we don't have to wait until the meeting after that. Um, we've talked about wanting an update on the um, AB 762 implementation. So I'm going to um, see if our, um, our, the partners that are implementing that would be willing to give us an update. I believe the 
the deadline for um, local agencies to submit a request for funding for that work was in September, and they're notifying folks in, in April um, or March about awards from that process. So hopefully we can get an update on, on that. Um, is there anything else I heard, um, we heard earlier wanting to, um, you know, to talk about data options and, and how to submit data um, that Jennifer mentioned, but is there anything else that we'd wanna talk about in April? Okay, great. Yeah, Harry. Just an overall uh, comment, not particularly for April, but listening to the discussion today, as well as those during previous meetings, it's an impressive amount of advanced planning, planning ahead as to what could be done, should be done, et cetera making it happen and then getting the reports out there for users. So just wanted to make a general comment that it's an impressive program. I did appreciate Chad's comment about the non-human consumers that might be linked into what uh, what is done, but uh, really, it's a lot like, uh, I think of the videos that are posted on YouTube with the sheepdog trying to herd <laughs> the sheep or the cattle into the corral and uh, getting them moving forward. So you've got a big job and well done. Thank you, Harry. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of folks helping with the corralling of the sheep <laughs> around here. It's a team effort for sure. That's a very kind comment. Thank you. Awesome. Well, um, if you think of anything, you know, this is a, a standing kind of action item that I sneak into our notes at a, um, every meeting. But if you think of anything that you want to hear about, if you're doing work that you want to present on, we would love to make space for that during these meetings. Um, they have been kept short uh, historically because I value your time and don't want to have a meeting for the sake of a meeting. But if there's something that you really want to share with this group, um, we welcome that wholeheartedly. So just let me know when you're ready to talk about that. Um, usually during the break, I'm sneaky and write action items on the slide, but we haven't had a break, so I'm going to wing it here. Bear with me. Yeah, Lauren. So um, was Colin Eaglesmith able to provide his presentation during the next meeting? Was that confirmed or was So we be... haven't confirmed that. We okay. learned this morning that there was a scheduling conflict okay. about 40 minutes before the start of our meeting. So that's an action item for Jay and I to follow up with Colin and get him hopefully on the next agenda. Um, okay, great. Yeah, that could be that spot. We want to hear from him, and hopefully he's already got the slides done, right? Like, yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely follow up on that for sure. Um, great. So that's the main action item I have for the the our second item for today. For um, the monitoring plan for this year, as Jay mentioned during that item, we've got a lot of the documentation done. The our Awesome partners at Swamp IQ are wrapping up um, doing the final touches on our uh, quality assurance program plan or QAP. Um, and we anticipate that that'll be ready to be finalized and ready to be posted by the end of February. Um, for those that have kind of been in this space for a while and use our QAPs as a resource, um, historically we've had one QAP for each, like, water body type. So we had a lakes quap and a coast quap and a rivers quap. This one kind of merges everything together. So it'll hopefully be one streamlined resource um, that we update uh, every three years. Um, as I mentioned, I'm um, working on getting availability from regional coordinators, 
um, for the kickoff meeting in um, February or March. I invited all SWAMP regional coordinators since it's a panel and we're probably having sites in all regions. So um, yeah, fill out that uh, scheduling poll and we'll, we'll get that on the books and get things going. Um, was there an action item on either of these that I missed? I usually lean on Jay for this, but if I missed something, please um, jump in and let me know. Um, for quick updates, I think the main thing here was for me to circle back with OEHA to kind of figure out um, a time and a place for them to present what's coming up this year or the next year or two and in, in their their work um, and maybe think about if the safety work group um, could provide feedback in terms of priority setting and, and things like that. So I have an action item for myself to follow up with uh, Wes et al to, to coordinate that. Um, if you're wanting to attend the National Fish Forum, definitely be sure to register so you get the information and you can check out Wes's poster. And I think that's it for the quick updates. Was there another action item that I missed? Yeah, Harry. Sometime back in the presentation, there was some mention of a 2022 data report. Is that going to be going out for review? Yeah, so the, I think it's the 2021 panel four, is that what you're talking about? 2021, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully Jay will have a draft. Um, we're, we're waiting on the organics data, so it won't be a necessarily complete draft until we get that information. But um, I know Jay and team are gonna start working up the metals and we're hopeful that he'll have a draft to present um, at the April meeting. So usually we try and get the draft out with the agenda um, before the meeting so folks can kind of take a peek and then give an opportunity for feedback. So yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah. Great, thanks. Unfortunately, the meeting is recorded. So if there are other action items that I assign to myself or others during the quick updates, I will be sure to record them in the notes. Um, for the realignment, Chad and myself and others that are part of the core realignment team are going to wrap things up this year. Um, and uh, we're creating a, a similar team in the San Francisco region. So we're going to kind of start coming together and, and preparing internally and externally for the San Francisco realignment in 2024. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm going to continue tribal engagement. Um, it'll be a different flavor this year just because we're doing other things, but um, I'm still intending on um, sh being in, you know, um, there's a, the Department of Water Resources is hosting a tribal water summit this year, and there are other, you know, conferences and, and spaces where I, I'm going to try and present and, and things like that, in addition to, you um, doing, you know, outreach and, and engagement to the tribes statewide. For the long-term monitoring priorities assessment, it's a mouthful, but I'm going to send out the uh, regional coordinators prompt template to our regional coordinators. I'm also going to create something similar for non-water boards partners um, to hopefully help kind of get those juices flowing and be a resource for folks to kind of begin those conversations in your own agencies and um, organizations so that you're ready to contribute to that conversation in 2024. Um, and once you get those, start talking amongst yourselves, start filling that baby in. Um, and uh, finally, for the, our last item as usual, I'm gonna be writing up the notes, post the recording, um, and this presentation on our webpage, and I'll send an email to the safety work group list once all of that is complete. Um, and if you have any other 
do meeting or topic recommendations or feedback, um, I'm always looking for those emails and excited to receive them. So with that, um, thanks for pushing through without a break today, but I think we can adjourn for today. <laughs>